All right, Shalom. All praise is going on. It goes to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rukakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and rule well. The peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. This is Peace Design. One back again with another uh, edifying lesson. Uh, and in this particular lesson, I want to speak about the woman. Uh, very briefly, you know, I really don't do too many lessons dealing with the woman, but um, it's a. It is a relevant subject in the scriptures, um, and this prophecy as well. Um, it's mainly what I push on on my particular channel is uh, you know mainly um, prophecies and things that are to happen um, according to scripture. Uh, for scripture says that uh, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Uh, so as far as the woman is concerned, um, I'll go right into it. Uh, of course, I want to give all praise and glory and honors to Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai and double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Um, <clears throat> um, the way that society portrays the woman... Um, in this day and age and her status and role in this society hasn't um hasn't always been so. Uh since the beginning the Heavenly Father created uh truth be told the woman to be subservient to the man. Um under the man as far as rank and status and Soon, it's going to be like that again. Now, I know that this is a hard pill to swallow for most of the world, you know, most of the people out there. Um, because the fact that you have women in the workforce with jobs, working alongside men, um, some women are even the main breadwinners in their home where they make more than men or... or, or you know, whatever the case may be, um, that's backwards, okay? That's something that the so-called white man made up through uh, the woman suffrage is suffrage suffrage uh, movement in the early 1900s, which led eventually into you know led into the 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 uh, feminist movement that you see going on today, uh, even into this whole Me Too movement, and it's wrong, okay? It's out of order according to uh, how God made everything, okay? How how the Most High, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, made everything in the beginning. Like I said, the so-called white man, he, he, he really changed the status for women uh, uh, really because he wanted, you know, the woman as far as being subservient to the man in the household or being a stay-at-home mom or, 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 or a woman that just stayed at home, um, it was an untapped tax market, okay? Meaning that the government wasn't getting any kind of money from women. So they created this women's suffrage movement and, and this feminist movement in order to get women into the uh, workforce, which, which majorly happened during World War II and afterwards to basically get them into the workforce in order to tax them and, you know, of course, to make more money, which in turn makes them also a slave to the elite bankers, uh, elite banking families underneath Esau. Okay, it was a major political move. All right, but like I said, it's all prophecy. Okay, it's all according to the scriptures. So now let me read this in the prophecy. This is Jeremiah, 31st chapter. Um... In the 22nd verse, it says, How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Now, this is talking about the nation of Israel. All right? Starting with the men, uh, our people rebelled against the commandments of the Lord. So he told us that we were backsliding. Okay? So this is what he said was going to happen. He said, For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. 
So the new thing in the earth that happened once Esau got into power was to put women in a, a so-called equal status with a man. You know, you got women presidents and prime ministers and, and judges and things like that over men. So now the status and rank before that the woman had is, is from being a subservient to her husband. And now that's seen now as... um. um it's 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 leaped <laughs> it's leaped over to the point that now the woman's over the man now, you know, they're getting major positions in these corporations and see them in Hollywood and you know now they're allowed to to change their sex into men or they're lesbians and it's, it's just a whole lot of madness. But this is why, you know, when we break the scriptures down. We inform you that when you read about Babylon the Great, which Babylon means a uh, uh, confusion going back to the hebrew word babal for confusion that babylon the great is america and america pushes this philosophy of the woman over the man uh not just here but around the world because it's, it's it's not so in asia it's not so in the middle east it's not so in africa but only over here in what's known as the west do you see that okay but that's because of the scripture I just read, where it says, For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth, a woman shall compass a man. All right? But how is it how, how was it supposed to be in the beginning? Let's go to Genesis the third chapter. Okay? And I'm gonna get straight to the point. I'm not gonna dwell too much on this uh, uh um for too long, but I wanna make the point that the way that society is now with the woman. OK. Um, it was prophecy that it was going to happen and that the Lord is going to put everything back in its proper order. OK. So this is Genesis three. And 13, it says, and the Lord Yahweh, uh, said unto the woman, what is this that thou has done? OK. Which is actually this says in uh, Yahweh's powers or the angels of the Lord or the messengers of Yahweh, which are the angels, said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So even going back to the beginning of time, so to speak, the woman was the one that was beguiled and sinned. And, uh, 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 um, succumb to the philosophies or listen to the philosophies of the serpent which was uh, uh, an evil man okay the spirit of the devil and a man so that same philosophy was resurfaced over here uh, uh, in these times okay so now it says verse 14 and the Lord's uh, power said unto the serpent because thou hast done this Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And that's why all this, this man, this Esau, the so-called white man, brings is confusion. Because he was cursed. And that's who he was back then. He was a, a, a part of the serpent seed. That same evil, wicked spirit is in these white people today. The Edomites. Okay. So now let me jump down to verse 16. It says, Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. That's why when women have birth, they have birth, or when they give birth, they have these birth pains. Okay? So now they have sorrow, because a lot of women, certain women, they die in childbirth. Okay? It says, In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be, that's why it's italicized to emphasize the, 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 the understanding of, of how the order is supposed to be here. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So it was set up from the beginning for the man to rule over the woman, the husband to rule over the wife. That's why when you go back to Jeremiah 31 and 22, which I read, it says the Lord is going to do a new thing in the earth. And uh, 
and uh, that a woman shall compass a man. Right. Jeremiah 31 and 22. How long wilt thou go about or thou, back, or thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. OK. Um, so that's what we see in the days. You can see the 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 um, the uh, the ordinance that the Heavenly Father set up has been turned around backwards now. OK. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. We can go ahead and start it right as I down there. Okay, come, come. Okay. I'm gonna uh, finish this lesson, then I'll. Oh, I'll stop. Yeah, I'm on fire. You good? Okay. Okay. Okay, come, come. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll finish this lesson now. Um, so now let's. Let's get to uh to uh um because the Lord said that the things that were turned upside down okay are going to be turned right back side up again. And this is what the white man did, right? So this is yep. This is uh Isaiah, Isaiah 29 and 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So what the Lord had set up uh, in the beginning was for the woman to be under the man and for, and for her to be ruled over by her husband. So when the white man had it in this society where now a woman compasses a man in this world, okay, that was him turning things upside down. So the Lord said, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. And that's a philosophy of Esau as far as uh, um, uh, as far as, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, you know, the school system with the Big Bang and, you know, he. You know, evolution. He tries to 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 push off the truth of the Lord, which that's what that that's also a part of the uh, fruit of knowledge and good and evil that Eve ate. The philosophies of the serpent, and now he's extended it to this. So it says, "Or shall he, the thing framed say of him that framed it? He hath no understanding." All right. So now they turn things upside down, but the Lord said, "It shall be esteemed." As the potter's clay, meaning he's going to form it back to how it's supposed to be. All right. Um, so how is it supposed to be? Let's go to. Uh, now, let's see what Yahweh Shai did and what he said, how things were supposed to be. OK. This is first Corinthians 11 and one. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Yahweh Shai. Now, I praise you, brethren. So this is how you're supposed to be being a follower of the Savior, the Messiah, okay? All right, who the word enemy calls Jesus Christ. It says, Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances, keep the order, that's in the scriptures, the laws, the commandments, right? As I have delivered them to you. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai, and the head of the woman is the man. That's how it was in the beginning. And when you fast forward throughout history into the New Testament, okay, this is what Yahweh Shah was sent forth to reestablish. Because over time, things were getting out of hand when it came to the household, okay? Even until now, even until this day. So this is to be reestablished again, like in the beginning, that the head of the woman is the man. It says, and the head of Yahweh Shah is the Most High Yahweh. All right. This is why the woman can't go directly to Yahweh Shai. OK, the same as we can't go directly to the Heavenly Father. The man has to go through Yahweh Shai because he's our head. The Messiah, the anointed, he's our head. OK, we have a head and the woman has a head. That's why it's important that the woman listen to her husband. OK. It's very important that the woman listens to 
her husband. And that's once again in the New Testament. Okay. So this is. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, now you got First Corinthians the, the, the seventh chapter, but I want to get the main point. Okay. It was in Timothy. Yep. So this is oh, it's in Titus. This is Titus 2 and 5. It says to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. That's how the woman is supposed to be. Chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of the Most High be not blasphemed. Now, for you women in the truth, you Israelite woman, you're not supposed to be out here dancing and cavorting and doing all these things on video and teaching okay the scripture says you're not supposed to be teaching no you see authority over a man you're supposed to be obedient to your husband and the man is supposed to understand that he's not to allow his woman to do that okay so now let's go back in timothy all right um because the scripture says that um, let's see here. Yep. First Timothy two and 11. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. And, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Okay. This, this is the scripture speaking. Now it says for Adam was first formed then Eve, going back to what I read about in Genesis 3. It says, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. All right. And this is just going into the order of how things are supposed to be. All right. It says, notwithstanding. And this is what you women have to acknowledge. You, were, you, your, your, your foremother, Eve, was in the transgression. And up until this day, you're, you're in the transgression, which is why it's important that you follow a man of the Lord and that if you have a man in his truth, you be obedient to him. But also he has to understand as well that he's supposed to be following what the scripture says and being under order underneath your Yahweh to what him, the Yahweh and the prophets are informing us. All right. It says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If they, if they, the woman, continue in faith and charity and, and holiness with sobriety. So that is what is supposed to, um, to, to be the order between a man and woman. All right? Because a woman is out of order in this society. And that's just the truth of it. Okay? You know? But um, that was mainly the point. Um. Uh, I may, you know, I may say a little bit more in a, in a later lesson, you know, once the spirit hits me. Like I said, I don't really often do lessons dealing with the woman, but this is, like I said, it's, it's, it's a part of the scriptures and it's a part of prophecy as well. All right. So this is the order of a woman according to the scriptures, uh, according to the Bible. And with that, I hope this was edifying. And until the next uh, lesson, um, I'm going to say uh, Shalom. Oh, a matter of fact, I was uh, another another scripture came to mind real quick. Um, let's see here. OK, going back to uh, the order of things. All right. Let's see here. Let's see, take a second. Timothy, is it two and 15? So like you. Bear me one second. All right. Um, all right. Let's 
Yep. First Peter's three and one. It says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won with by the conversations of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. All right? So, like, you're supposed to be in subjection to your own husbands. Okay? Like I said, you know, this is just edification on the order of the women in the Bible. Uh, how society has set it up, but that through Yahweh Shai, our Savior, uh, the Savior of the Israelites and the Israelites only, okay, um, everything is going to go back to its proper order, okay? And with that, I'll say Shalom.